Hey there! Today, I'll be showing you some tips for completing the Monarch's Journey challenges for Basarab... Uh... Basarab. I played through this challenge using only the DLCs that have been made available for free in the past, those being the Old Gods, Sword of Islam, Sons of Abraham, the Reaper's Dew, and Horse Lords. However, none of the mechanics of those DLCs are required for the strategies I'm using for this guide, which should help you regardless of which ones you own. Let's get right into it with the challenges. All three of them can be completed for as long as your game continues, so you don't need to rush any of them as long as you can get them done before 1453. The first is Voivodes of Wallachia. Have Duke vassals in your realm who are of your dynasty. Three for bronze, six for silver, and nine for gold. Second is So Much at Stake. While playing a character who has the Impaler trait, kill as many people as possible. Three for bronze, six for silver, and ten for gold. Finally, Castle Mania. Have as many castles in your realm as possible. 4 for bronze, 8 for silver, and 12 for gold. You can also build royal palace great works, and each stage of each palace will be worth 3 points. Let's get so much at stake out of the way first, since it doesn't have very much strategy behind it. The method for getting the Impaler trait on your character depends on whether or not you own the Way of Life DLC. In both cases, since Impaler is a lifestyle trait, you can't normally get it if you already have one of the other lifestyle traits, so avoid decisions and event chains that give you other lifestyles if you're shooting for this challenge. If you don't own Way of Life, you need to wait for a random chain of events where your character is annoyed by another noble. Pick the option to nail the messenger's hats to their heads, then the option to explore the idea of cruel punishments further, ignore the peasants when they get upset, and finally the option that has the Impaler trait icon next to it. With Way of Life, you can get Impaler by taking the Intrigue focus and constantly spying on someone. Every time your spying uncovers information or gives you an opportunity to sabotage your target, even if you decide not to actually make the attempt, you get a chance to level up, which has multiple possible outcomes, but the important one is progressing from Amateur Schemer to Schemer, and finally gaining the opportunity to choose between the Master Schemer and Impaler lifestyles. Obviously, you want the latter. For best results, use the character finder to locate hedonists, drunkards, impalers, bastards, dwarves, homosexuals, inbreds, adulterers, or gluttonous people because they're easier to spread rumors about. The CK2 wiki also has a brief guide on how to guess when characters are plotting because discovering plots through spying is also an effective way of farming schemer level up chances. Once you've got Impaler, save your game, arrest and execute 10 people, and unpause to let the game register it to unlock the gold challenge. Doing this will absolutely ruin everyone's opinion toward you, so reload your save if you want to progress toward the other challenges on the same save file. Speaking of which, let's talk about Voivodes of Wallachia. In short, you're playing as a weak Orthodox realm, surrounded on all sides by other Christians, with the enormous Mongol Golden Horde immediately to your east, who owns half of your de jure kingdom. You have no claims and no easy way to get them, no coastal counties for boats, and your two young children are the only initial members of your dynasty who you can use for alliances. You can't reliably expand in any direction, and if the Golden Horde ever decides one day that it wants you dead, you're dead. Knowing this, you need to grow from a two-duchy kingdom to owning at least nine that you can hand out to achieve our goals. Attempting to accomplish this as an Orthodox Christian is an exercise in extreme suffering, so we're going with Old Reliable. Convert to Catholic, optionally participate in a crusade to get a ton of money and piety, and use a Pope-sponsored invasion to take over another kingdom. I highly recommend setting the Gender Law Game Rule to All, since it'll allow you to give titles to your female dynasty members for voivodes as well as males. As soon as the game starts, divorce your wife, buttering up your patriarch with some money and honorary titles if necessary, and remarry a Catholic woman, preferably one with high fertility. We need to start expanding the family so we have plenty of people to turn into dukes after all. Also, make sure you change the law to allow you to revoke titles. You'll need that later, and it's easier to pass it now when you only have a couple vassals and they're reasonably happy with you. You can right-click your new wife's portrait to secretly convert to Catholic for 250 piety, then publicly convert by right-clicking your own portrait. Once you're publicly Catholic, you can participate in any crusades called by the Pope, but mostly you should just hunker down and save up money and troops while regularly checking the religion tab to see if there are any papal invasion targets available. If there are, usually because some large Catholic kingdom is being ruled by a child or has an anti-pope, grab one that you think you can beat. You don't need to declare right away. The invasion CB lasts until you or the target ruler dies, so grab it when it's available, and wait until you have nine family members in your court who can be given titles, as well as when you're strong enough to actually defeat your target. England is the most commonly available invasion target because they love establishing anti-popes, but they're also really strong, so be careful. 
I lucked out and got the opportunity to invade Norway, which doesn't put up nearly as much of a fight. It may be tempting to marry off your kids for powerful alliances, such as with the King of Bohemia, but remember that if any of your family members grow up and leave your realm to live with a landed spouse when they get married, they're no longer within your realm and you can't give out land to them, preventing them from counting toward the Voivodes challenge. So either build up an extra large family so you can afford to marry off some just for alliances and not give them any titles, only marry your kids to second or third children of nobles so they don't get whisked away, or compensate for your lack of alliances by accumulating even more mercenary money. While performing the invasion, take one holding in as many counties as possible so that you personally gain all of those counties when you win the war. You'll need 10 counties in your personal domain at the very least to pull this off. When your target kingdom comes under your control, you'll certainly have added more than enough castles to your realm to complete Castlemania, and you'll be in a perfect situation to set up voivodes. The method for this is identical to what we did for Princes of Wales in the Llewellyn Challenge. Revoke and create duchies until you have nine. You should probably keep your main army within the vicinity of the kingdom you've just conquered, since there's a good chance the local dukes will rebel and need to be put down and arrested at some point while you're revoking. Once you've got nine duchies, you're ready. Pick nine family members to be your voivodes and give each of them one county then give each of them one of your duchy titles. If your succession law is still Gavelkind, I'd recommend not making your oldest child one of your voivodes. Gavelkind causes some weird restrictions on giving titles to your primary heir, so it's probably better to play it safe and squeeze out one more dynasty member rather than realize too late that you can't give out your ninth duchy to your heir. I highly recommend doing all of this without unpausing, because in my experience, the kids you give these duchies to tend to get overthrown pretty easily, which requires another round of revoking and handing the duchies back out. Once you have nine Basarab Dukes under you, you'll have achieved gold in the final challenge for this monarch's journey. One alternative method I was thinking about while writing this is to immediately swear fealty to the Emperor of the Golden Horde when the game starts. Because he's over his vassal limit, he'll almost certainly transfer the Duke of Moldavia under your control, which will immediately give you gold in Castlemania. It also gives you access to two more duchies for voivodes later, and if you can get 100 piety before your new liege gets converted to a different faith, you can use the decisions menu and publicly declare yourself a Tengri pagan. This requires the Old Gods DLC, but that DLC is still available for free by signing up for the CK3 newsletter from Paradox, link in the description, and being a pagan makes it possible for you to expand outward by county conquesting your Christian neighbors. You might also try becoming stronger within the realm of the Golden Horde itself, and fighting the other vassals. Your liege is so powerful that no outside enemy in their right mind will attack you, though you do still need to build up your own troops to be able to wage successful offensive wars. The drawback of this method is that it'll take quite a bit longer to chip away at enough land to get nine duchies under your belt rather than taking over an already established kingdom in a single war. But the end result should ultimately be the same. Once you have access to nine duchies, take them away from anyone who isn't of your dynasty and redistribute them for the gold challenge. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it helped if you are struggling. Let me know if anything interesting happened in your Wallachian journey, or if you came up with any tips or strategies that I missed. I'll see you next time.